Welcome back to Moby Motion. It's great to have you. Now, if you picked up an Asus Store NAS, you might have noticed that it's lacking a GUI, so a graphical app that lets you schedule jobs. But don't worry, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Cron Tab UI. Now, this is a GUI wrapper around Cron Tab, which is an incredibly powerful task scheduler for Linux based systems like the Asus Store NAS. And this is going to give us an interface that we can use in our web browser to set scheduled jobs on the NAS. Now, these can be incredibly simple, like a single shell command, but they can also be really sophisticated, like entire scripts. Let me talk you through at a really high level what I'm going to be doing today. And that way you can see if this video is for you and you can skip around to each of these topics using the chapters down below. So, First, we're going to install Portainer, and this is how we're going to run CronTab UI. Then we're going to use Portainer to deploy CronTab UI, but we're going to actually deploy a custom Docker image because the default CronTab UI image is lacking important things we'll need like SSH and rsync. We are going to make sure that this Docker image can access all the right files that we need it to on the NAS. And then we're going to build a really simple but really powerful script to back up my Asus Store NAS to any other rsync compatible NAS. And I'm going to be using a Synology DS1817 Plus. And to get that rsync command to work reliably and securely, we're going to set up SSH keys on the two machines. Now you might be thinking, oh, but Asus Store already has rsync within the UI. Why do you need CronTab UI for this? It's because I want to run a more advanced rsync command. So I want to back up everything from my Asus Store NAS to the Synology NAS, except for specific file types. Now, rsync is very powerful. It allows you to exclude files with certain patterns and their names, uh, but you can't access this functionality in the Asus Store rsync utility. And that's why we're going to be setting up our own shell script to run this rsync command. And once we have this shell script, we are going to use CronTab UI to schedule it. And we'll talk through some of the simple patterns that we can use to schedule this as frequently as we want. Now, this might sound like a lot of ground to cover, and this took me four hours to figure out, but I've been through all of that pain and figured out just exactly how to get this working so that you don't have to. And I'm going to do my absolute best to condense this down and make it as easy to digest and as easy to follow as possible. Before we dive in, a quick disclaimer, both Asus Store and Synology have very kindly provided me NASAs for review, and I don't have to send either of them back but no money changed hands and I'm under no obligation to make this specific video and you'll see this video before anyone at either of those companies. So let's dive in. We're going to need to install two things from the Asus Store App Central. First, we'll install a Docker. So just search for Docker and click install and follow the instructions on screen. Then search for Portainer we're going to find Portainer CE, that's Container Engine. And we're going to install that too and follow the on-screen instructions. Now, sometimes apps take a couple of minutes to show up. So be a little bit patient, wait a minute, and then you should see Portainer. Then double click on Portainer to open up the initialization wizard. We're going to follow all the on-screen instructions to set up Portainer. First, we have to make an administrator username and password. I'll just warn you because I had to learn this the hard way. If you forget this password, it's going to be very annoying to reset. There's no like forgotten password. Make sure it's a strong password, but save it in your password manager like now so you don't forget to later. Then click Get Started to connect Portainer with your local Docker environment, which we installed separately. Now, for my use case, I can't simply use the base CronTab UI image. I'm going to have to create my own image so that I can add additional packages. So I'm going to need SSH and rsync. But in this same step that we're about to go through, you can add any other packages that you'll need for your scheduled workflows. There are a lot of steps here. I'm going to do my best to break things down step by step 
but sometimes like things might be a little bit different on your system. You might not be able to find the exact button here. Maybe the version of Portainer is different. ChatGPT is your friend or Gemini or Claude. These language models can talk you through this whole thing if there are any issues, but especially if like you're stuck on one step or you're getting an error message, really recommend just giving it to uh, the most advanced language model that you can. So in Portainer, navigate to images in the left sidebar, click on build a new image, give this image a descriptive name. I'm just going to call it Crontab UI SSH RSync. That lets me know all the packages that are available in it. Under build method, select web editor, and then you'll see a text box where you can insert a Docker file. Now, all we need here is two very simple lines, which I'll have in the description below. The first one, make sure that we start from the base Crontab UI image. And the second line simply allows us to install any other packages that we need. I'm gonna install SSH and rsync. When you're done, click build the image and wait for the build process to complete. Now that we have our custom image, let's deploy it so we can use it. In the sidebar on the left, navigate to containers and click add container. Give it a name. I'm also gonna call this Crontab UI SSH rsync. For image, go into advanced mode so that it's not expecting a website. And this is important, insert the exact name of the image. This probably ends in a colon latest. If you're not sure, you can go back to your images. You can find the image that you just created and under tags, so mine says Crontab UI SSH rsync colon latest, that is important. You wanna make sure that this is accessible on the network. So click on publish a new network port. On the host, I'm gonna say 8158. And on the container, I'm gonna say 8000. And then that might be taken on your machine if you're using that port for something else. But if it is, just give it a different port. This is how we're gonna access Crontab UI in a second. So it's gonna be as simple as going to the NAS IP slash 8158. Next, let's move on to volume mapping, which is gonna be crucial. So it's really important that my Crontab UI container can access at least two separate locations. Because I'm gonna be using this as a backup job, it's important that this can access the folders that I want to back up. So for this first mount, I'm gonna make sure host points to the location on the NAS. Uh, these are like existing folders on the NAS. So I'm gonna point this to the data that I want to back up. Then for container, this is what the data is gonna look like to Crontab UI. And it's important you remember what this looks like. It's kind of arbitrary, but I'm gonna call it slash data slash YouTube NAS HDD. And I'm gonna make sure this is read only. So even if there's a huge uh, mistake with my bash script, that this image can't accidentally delete any of my files or even change them. It can only read these files. Next, I'm gonna make sure that there's a shared folder that I can use to store scripts. And this should be accessible from the NAS and from the container itself. So inside volume one, I have a top level shared folder called uh, Docker. Inside that, I'm gonna create a folder called Crontabs. You can do that using the GUI, using File Explorer in ADM. And so here for host, I'm gonna say volume one slash docker slash crontabs. That's the exact path to this folder. And again, it's also gonna be very important to specify what this folder looks like to scripts running on the crontab UI container. And for this, I'm gonna pass it in as slash etc slash crontabs. So my docker crontabs folder will look like etc crontabs inside the container. And this one, I am gonna make it writable, so it's not gonna be read only. Now for me, this is because I wanna be able to store log files and other stuff uh, from the running crontab uh, jobs. And so, so it's important that this is also writable. We're also gonna need a folder for SSH keys. Now this is important for me because I'm gonna be transferring files over rsync with SSH. If you don't need this, you can ignore this step, but on the host, I'm gonna to go to home slash my username slash dot SSH. 
that's going to be the host location and that's going to be mapped to the container location slash root slash dot ssh this can also be read only that's going to be it for volume mounts for my use case next we're going to set the restart policy to always if the machine shuts off or i restart it for any reason i want this container to come back up then click deploy the container and once that's done you should be able to access this cron tab ui which is going to be a really simple but really powerful ui for setting scheduled jobs on your asus store nas you can access it by going to your nas ip whatever the same ip is that you're using to access your nas colon 8158 or whatever port you set up before now because setting up crontab ui and setting up this rsync job are two like quite different things and each of them is quite involved actually i'm going to split this up into two different videos so in the second video we are going to set up a job here but if you're not interested in rsync you, you don't care about ssh you just want to get your jobs running click new give it a name and then you can insert any command there you can write any shell command and that will run on your schedule then you can set how frequently it runs so if you want something very simple like hourly or daily or weekly you can click that but crontab is incredibly powerful and crontab ui lets you run on any cron tab schedule you just have to use the minute hour day month week uh, boxes that you see underneath this is incredibly powerful you can get it to run every hour from midday to 7 p.m and then stop you can get it to run on the fifth minute of every hour so anything that i can think of i can set as a schedule in cron tab ui if you're not sure how to specify this ask chat gpt it will tell you exactly how to set any of these really complicated schedules next i would recommend ticking enable error logging this will help you see why things have failed if they have failed and then you click save and that will create a, a new line so you can view your cron tab ui job really important thing this took me like way too much time before i figured that out this won't run yet if you hover your mouse over the floppy disk icon on the left, it'll say something like, oh, you have to deploy it. So you'll have to click save to crontab and then it'll sync everything between the UI and with the underlying crontab. And then these things will run. I hope you found this useful as video one. Comment down below if you have any questions. Make sure you're subscribed so you see video two where we will set up this really sophisticated uh, rsync backup that excludes different file types and it'll allow us to back up the Asus Store NAS to a Synology NAS. And inside this, I am going to create this dogger. Dogger? What's a dogger file?